Hello, this is Joe Nicasio, Employee Escape Plan, your business coach. I'm a sales trainer and marketing trainer as well. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to qualify like a pro. I mean, this is maybe one of the most important things you can do to grow your business um, is this ability to size up people fast. So, um, you know, why is this important? I sketched out some notes. Number one, you know, if you're dealing with the wrong people, you're dealing with people that are not in pain. They, they, they're they not motivated to buy. If you are if you don't qualify good, you end up uh, spending your time, you know, with people that don't have a budget or they're not capable of making a decision. And, you, you know, they end up being a bad fit and the whole thing ends up being kind of a waste of time. So if you do nail this right, though, and you do become... Uh, uh, really good at qualifying people, you end up attracting motivated buyers, you filter out everyone else. Uh, these are people that will find the money and they're eager to make a decision, they're eager to get involved and the truth is, is when you're dealing with somebody that's highly qualified, you make a big impact and you make money. So uh, let's get into this a little bit. So the first thing I wanted to share with you, class is in session, the first thing I wanted to share with you is to adjust your sales agenda, you know, I think too many people have a sales agenda to get the sale and when your your sales agenda is to get the sale, you got those dollar signs shining in your eyes and what happens, you end up square, scaring people away and if you, you know, if you get the sale, you win, but if you don't get the sale, you lose, so it's a win-lose agenda and uh, what you want to do is, is have an agenda where you feel like you're walking away and winning every single time, okay? So how do we do that? It's a three-phase process. And so we need to, first of all, we need to set the agenda. So the agenda where we win every time is to get the big word here, truth of a good fit. So if the truth is they're a good fit, you win. And if the truth is they're not a good fit, you also win because every time you get the truth, you win. It's a little different mentality. Maybe I can help you, maybe I can. If I can, great. That's the truth, I'll help you. You'll be my client. If I can help you, great. That's the truth. I wouldn't want to waste my time with somebody that I couldn't help. Now, what, you know, what makes a good fit? You need to have some kind of a criteria. What makes a good fit? Yeah, just, you know, broad brush strokes, you know, money. Can they pay you? Service. Can you solve their problem? Fun. Do you like working with them? Money, service, and fun. There's some other criteria. You know, one of them is, is are they coachable? In my case. Or, you know, let's use a more generic term for everybody that's not necessarily in coaching. But are they responsive? You know, are they in my niche? Do they have a problem I can solve? Uh, what else? I got a list of them here. Ba, ba, ba. Do they have money? Ba, ba, ba. Oh, and do they have a sense of urgency? You know, is it a priority? You know, I, I want to know that they have a specific problem. I want to know that they have a problem I can solve, and I want to know that that you know. Uh, here's a big one: is is you know the money. You know, are they an economic buyer? You know, are you capable, if this is right for you, are you capable of cutting me a check? If you're not capable of cutting me a check, like who, who is, you know, it's not a good fit. Why would I talk to you? You know, you're not qualified if you're not the guy or the lady that can make a purchase decision. So, you know, all this falls under this idea of sizing up people quick. And one of them, this is a big one, is vulnerability. You know, are they coachable? Are they vulnerable or they full their ego you know i just talked to somebody not long ago and uh, you know i have a standard coaching question i ask about what do you want where are you at and what might be holding you back and uh i always ask you know is it do i get your permission to ask you a tough question and the tough question is you know everybody does something to sabotage their success what do you do and this guy just told me about how life is perfect and you know he's making a ton of money and there's no problems in his business Hey, look, you know, maybe the guy is perfect. I've never met a perfect person yet. But, um, 
you know, if we're puffed up with, look, in business, we need to like, people think you need to like put on a show like you're successful, but I think we need to be vulnerable with people. We need to let people know, you know, um, I've made money, I've lost money, you know, it's too many people are like, well, I've made a thousand business successes here and I've moved, you know, 400 homes and I never fail. Dude, those are, those are red lights. Those are, those are like sirens going off. Do not work with this person. Because they're so full of their ego, they're not humble. They're not, they're, they're not vulnerable. They're not, they're not willing to admit that there's something to be worked on. You know, the biggest, the first step to, you know, solving a problem is to be of serene mind. The first step to solving a problem is admitting you have a problem. And if you got problems and you don't admit them, you're actually in denial. So, uh, I want to know, number one, can they pay me? And number two, can I be of service? Is it, a, is it going to be a positive relationship? Do I like working with you? Are you responsive? You know, uh, everybody's got, you know, so, uh, a form of self-sabotage. What's yours? Oh, I don't, you know... There's nothing you can teach me. I got it all going on. Well, they're not immediately. Oh, the truth is they're not a good fit. And I'm so, so glad I found that out. Do they have a problem I can solve? You know, are they just trying to pick my brain or do they have a specific issue going on in their business? But here's what's beautiful about this. The, you know, the, the prize, the prize is, you know, they get my heart and soul. If, if it is a good fit, they're going to get my heart and soul. They're going to, I'm going to show up as a massive contribution to their success. So as you're talking to people, like your job is to get to the truth of a good fit. Are they a good fit for working with you or not? Um, and if they are a good fit, you know, uh, uh, if I've got a medicine that cures a disease, I want to know if you've got that disease. I, why would I want to sell you medicine for a specific disease if you don't have that disease? You know, if I, I don't want your money if I can't help you. And if I can't help you, I don't want your money. And so the name of the game here is to size up people, people fast. And then when you do get the right people, then you can pour your heart and soul. You can be a massive contribution to them so you don't waste your time. Um, so there's this idea of, you know, what is sales mastery? You know, too many people are saying the wrong thing. They're saying sales is a numbers game. Sales is not a numbers game. Sales is a one-on-one -on -one relationship building game. And if you treat people like a number, you deserve all the sales you don't get. Okay? But what is mastery? Mastery is, um, you know, the, the numbers game. Say, oh, if I get 1 out of 10 or 2 out of 10, you know, or 3 out of 10, those are good numbers. But mastery is 10 out of 10. Now, nobody gets mastery. But the point is, um, by the way, if you have any comments, uh, you know, I welcome you for being here and all that. And um, if you have any comments or questions about qualifying and sizing people up quick. But anyway, mastery is about 10 out of 10. Now, that doesn't mean that you sell 10 out of 10 people, whether they're... Qual you know, they, people talk about, oh, you can sell... Uh, ice to Eskimos. Guess what? Es Eskimos don't need ice. They're not qualified. I'm not going to waste my time. What I, what, what I would like to do, though, is maybe teach an African to dream about snow. That might be a little bit different. Dream about air conditioning. Okay? But 10 out of 10 is mastery. That means that you talk to 10 out of 10 qualified people. 10 people have the disease that your medicine cures. Matter of fact, my attitude towards this is if you can help somebody and you don't help somebody, um, you're actually doing them a moral disservice. So you have a moral obligation to help the people you can. So mastery basically says if 9 out of 10 people take my medicine and somebody doesn't, that means 1 out of 10 died. Not on my watch. i got to do everything I possibly can in my power to make sure that they make a decision you know if I can help somebody I should help them and do everything I can to help them of course they need to pay the price that's called a quid pro quo that's what business is all about alright so um, you know there's different kinds of uh, um, there's different kinds of qualification formulas I learned one from Tom Hopkins NEADS uh, oops. What do they have now? What's their current situation? And what, what do they enjoy about what they have now? And 
or would they alter or change or improve? Uh, are they the decision maker? And then you you know offer up some kind of solution. So this is a formula that's that's a Tom Hopkins type of formula of sales training, uh, sizing people up. Another formula, you know, it's a little bit you know more Sandler sales training, and so we've got uh, pain, you know, money and decision. Are we dealing with a decision maker? So the first thing is is you know do they have enough pain to 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 get into action? Do they have a sense of urgency? Are they super comfortable? You know, another qualifying question I ask all the time is on a scale of 1 to 10, you know, or is this a later thing or a sooner thing, you know? And, uh, you know, I want people that say, this is now, you know. If somebody's, you know, maybe a, a, maybe a 9 or a 10, but if somebody says this is a later thing and not a sooner thing, you know, they are not qualified. I don't want to waste my time with them. Now, when it comes to you know going for the the big deals and the big money, one of the questions you always want to ask is, "Are you the decision maker? Are you the one that's capable of writing a check?" And if if you can, great, let's continue the conversation. If you can't, who is capable of cutting me a check, and how do I get to them? Because I don't want to waste my time with people that can't cut me a check. That's just bad use of of time. So, uh, you know, we, we, we talk to them as a human being, but we're not going to waste our time there thinking that that's uh, business time. And then, you know, one of the things I really wanted to talk about is uh, I had a, a very wealthy friend who was advisor to many, like, billionaires. And one of the things that billionaires do is they size up people, you know, fast. So the question is, how good are you at sizing up people? And, you know, let me give you a couple of the filters that this man uh, told me that they look for. You know, they're looking for physical weakness. If somebody's got bad health, do you think a billionaire is going to put them in charge of their $500 million project? No, you're not going to put, you know, as your project leader, somebody has got health problems. You're going to be, because they're the ones that's going to call in sick. They're the ones that are not going to be there. They're the ones that are not going to get the job done. So that's physical, you know, and there's mental, you know, do they have good judgment? Everybody can have good judgment in a job interview, but when the pressure cooker's on, do you have the good judgment? So there's, you know, so there's, um, there's, um, um, physical, you know, there's, um, there's, you know, your expertise. Everybody can talk a good BS, but, you know, um, you want to size people quick. Do they really know their stuff? You know, when the pressure cooker's on, will their health maintain? Will their expertise maintain? Another one is, you know, mental or or or, uh, or, or emotional. You know, are these people capable of, uh, you know, you know mil billionaires size up people quick? You know, when the heat's on... Uh, are they going to wig out, flip out, have an emotional breakdown, or um, are they going to be the calm in the middle of the storm? And another one that the billionaires really look at is moral. This is huge. You know, it's like, oh, you're a nice guy, you're a smart guy, you've got a good heart, but at the end of the day, you know, are you going to be loyal or are you going to betray me when the, when the heat goes on? You know, Judas got the coins, he got the money, but he betrayed Jesus. And so, uh, qualification is this process of getting really good at sizing people up quickly. You know, if you've got a medication and you can cure somebody and they've got the disease, you want to offer your medicine up and you want to... Mastery is 10 out of 10. You can size people up by their NEADS. What do they have now? What do they enjoy about it? Would they alter or change anything? Um, are they in some pain? Um, uh, are they capable of making a decision? You know, do they have a budget? Do I like them? This is so important. You know, it's like I have the ability to help people make a lot of money or, or improve the money that they're currently making. Matter of fact, I don't want to make big giant promises. I'm not going to make you that billionaire. You know, it's up to you, but I can give you those fundamentals that'll, that'll put you on the right path. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I can help people 
do a lot better than they're currently doing. The question is, do I owe that to anybody? I don't owe that to anybody. Like, I, you know, I give people I just meet, I give them maybe 30 minutes of my time or 45 minutes, maybe an hour. But, you know, when somebody pays me 10 grand, I can pour my soul into them. I can spend, you know, uh, several weeks with them, maybe even. Um, and, and so... So it's really important that um, that we size people up quick. Another thing is, is are they responsive? So uh, this person that I, I talked to today, um, he said that, uh, um, no, no, I've got it all together. I've got everything's working. My money's working. I'm working for big corporations and everything's perfect. There's not, you know, basically what he's telling me, there's nothing, nothing specific that I can get a handle on. I want to pick your brain, but I, I I have no problems. You know, I have no problems that you can help me with. Well, guess what? You're you're not responsive to what our conversation. So, and then is it a priority? Is it a later thing or a sooner thing? You want to size people up fast so you don't waste your time with the wrong people, and you don't you don't want to put the wrong people on your projects. Uh, you don't want to put the wrong people. You don't want the wrong customers. You really don't want the wrong customers. You want the right customers because the right customers, guess what? It is a priority. They're going to be responsive. They, they put their problems on the table. They don't have a problem paying you. They appreciate you. They like you. They trust you. You know, um, they don't have a problem making a decision. And um, um, they're vulnerable. They're willing to learn. They're coachable. All right. So... I just want to encourage you to come up, you know, there's a lot more that can be said about qualifying people and sizing people up quick. I think this was a really good uh, fast outline. I uh, taught you as much as I can in this uh, short amount of time here. Uh, I just scribbled out some notes. But uh, uh, if, I, I'd like for, you know, if you, if, you, if you need more help, I'd like for you to feel comfortable uh, reaching out. Go to my website, EmployeeEscapePlan.com. Top of the page is a scheduling button that gets you on my calendar. Um, you know, I, Bill Brooks from uh, uh, Brooks uh, Sales Training, he said there's two things that the best salespeople do. is is They're really good at qualifying and they're really good at building trust. Okay? So what we talked about today was qualifying. The other side is building trust. You put these two pieces together and uh, uh, you're going to be right there in the top five percent of people in sales this is joe nicasio your business coach employee escape plan um i'm here for you thanks for watching thanks for sharing god bless you have a prosperous day